Hello and welcome to DNA Software's CAN Demo. Today we'll be focusing on visual op, multiplex troubleshooting. So these are the results that we have from our multiplex primer and probe design. And we notice the NPLEX here. We have a nice one right here. It's uh, the Albicon variant. and use the control bar. We see we have the primer. Then we have the probe right next to it, about 10 nucleotides down. So that looks nice. We look at the second one, see something very similar. Okay, but it's 92.44%. It's not really a bad design. Then we have this one, a little further away, a little downstream from the uh, reverse primer. But we also notice that very AT rich, it's 30 nucleotides, that was the limit that we set for the probe design. But it's very AT rich, we notice. So looking at, at that in the end flex, the probe and primer are going to take up 79.63% of that target. So we might want to try and raise that up, but we're going to finish looking at the rest of our NPLEX to make sure everything else is okay. So here we have the Albicon variant with the forward primer on the anti-sense, finding at 65, 98.78. Here we have um, wild-type Albicons, anti-sense with it reverse primer, finding 98.7% the NSN strand, and then the other reverse primer is right here for glabrata, or this is a forward primer against the NSN for glabrata, and it's finding 100% of that. So it looks like our primers are in good shape, it's just the addition of the probe that kind of brings down our um, percentage bound. So we can then look up and we see we have some true and there's some very low percentages here. These are reverse primers finding their scent strand and since the scent strand is being taken up in the end flex, visual off will see this as a competition experiment and the end flex will prevail. So it's taking up as much of that primer as possible. So we have the scent strand here, we have the reverse primer, then we have a probe. So that means that the actual true for glabrata right here is going to be very low. So this is what's left of the primer after it's being taken up in equilibrium with its NPLEX structure. So in order to get our percentage bound up for a multiplex, uh, typically it's going to be an AT-rich target if you design your primers and probes using visual op. And in order to control that, we have to then go back to, to our design, our primer design. So we have advanced parameters. And this is where we can raise up the percentage bound in our NPLEX. And typically, it'll happen because we're either going to reduce the temperature or the annealing temperature, which most people can't do because they buy kits from the market and have to get a specific temperature. But if you do have some latitude there, reducing the temperature will increase the percentage bound. Another thing you can do is add salt. And again, that's something that most people can't do because they're using PCR kits from the market and they don't want to mess with the salt content. So that leaves us with oligo length. So if we make the primers, or in this case the probes, longer, then you'll have um, healthier binding and your percentage bound will go up. And it's only because of the AT rich nature, uh, specifically of glabrata. So in pro primer design window for the glabrata, I select that. I'm going to keep the range the same but I can change the length. 
And in order to change the length, it's in size for the advanced parameters. I can do that. Put the optimum at 35 and the max at 35. I could also change the minimum to 65. Kind of push up the uh, TM a little bit. And I think I'll keep everything else the same. So if I want to redo the Glibrata probe, then I would check off the other two, make sure Glibrata is set. So when I go into the sequences window, I'm going to leave all three targets on because again, even though I'm doing a single probe design, I want to make sure that it's going to be very specific for the Glibrata target. And I also want to make sure that um, it doesn't mishybridize to any of the albicons. And one of the things that I want to make sure of is that I deselect the original probe for Glibrata. And the reason for that is that it could result in a mishybridization penalty that is going to give you a no feasible solution in that it could not find a solution um, because this probe was in here. I'm just going to deselect it, just kind of shut it off let it go and keep the other two probes and all of the primers and the three targets. So we go to run design. And you see we have longer probes now. So each of these is a little longer. Uh, this is 35, which is the maximum we asked for. And again, I like working with cents, cent strands. And you can target either sense or anti-sense, depends on what you uh, what you want to do with your project. But I'm going to add that to my experiment. So this is my new Glibrata. I can even name it. I can keep track of it. And use with Rada Pro. And then I can simulate that experiment again. So again, we're doing an N flex, but notice that we're we substituted our new design and we shut off the old probe design. So once this N flex is finished, we should be able to increase percentage bound and an increased TM or effective TM for this uh, NPLEX. And we're going to bind each of the probes with their partner uh, primers on their respective target. So we just watch the uh, progress bar and see how that goes. So when you have brand new primers and probes that you brought in from outside, say you designed them someplace else, uh, there, there are many more considerations in optimizing your multiplex. But if you design them in VisualOMP, then VisualOMP will make sure that their probes are not being designed for any secondary structure in the target, and also that they're not forming any hairpins. So we took our new Glibrata probe. We added that to our NPLEX, and sure enough, we now see that the percentage bound has gone up. So again, this is for primers and probes that are designed in VisualOp. If you want to try to nail your multiplex right out of the box, my advice is to go to the advanced parameters. And if you look at the sequences window, You'll notice if you hover your pointer over each of the targets, we see the length and the GC content. So the GC content here is only 36%. The second one is 35. And the next one is 38%. But if we look at Glibrata, we right click, get a drop down menu, and edit text editor. This 
about 500 nucleotides long. So as we look around 300, where we're designing for, we do see that there are a lot of P's. So it's going to be very AP rich. So if you can look at this and sort of assess it, see that is there are a lot of runs of P's, a lot of runs of A's, then you can go into your pro primer design and just change it. So you, we changed it to a 30 nucleotide minimum for our probe, 35 optimum, and a 35 maximum. And many people are reluctant to change the length of their oligos, their primers and their probes, because they think that they will give to unimolecular structure, that it will fold into hairpins. But if it's being designed in visual op, visual op will throw out any design speed that will result in a hairpin. So you could make this um, as long as you want, really. But typically, I, I stop at around 40 or 35 nucleotides. And it will give you a probe or a primer, if you redesign that to this length, that will not form a hairpin. So again, we see using this strategy, we were able to raise the percent bound for our glabrata to 99.59. So again, we can look at the structure. It looks like it's in about the same place. It just made it longer. So that's how you uh, optimize visual op design multiplex primers and probes in visual op. If you have any further questions, you can contact me, Norm, N-O-R-M, at dnasoftware.com. Thank you and have a nice day.